Well, you want to go ahead and jump into some calls for a little I bit? Think we should. Get back to it? Oh, there's an XJW. Is there? Yeah. You want to, let's start there. Yeah. We got Jim in California. You are on with Lloyd Evans. Hello, you guys. How are you doing tonight? Uh, today? I've switched my phone off now, so hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to fire him. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for calling in. Of course. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure to be uh, on the phone with you guys. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting both of you in the past uh, in different uh, occasions. And uh, the reason I'm calling today is because uh, this kind of relates to what you guys are talking about. I am in a situation where um, my entire family is so J- uh, believing JWs. I haven't been for the longest time, uh, and they know about it. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, we have I've, I've had a son, and he's he's just a year old, and they're starting to showing JW propaganda and trying to indoctrinate him, even though I've uh, sp- explicitly told him that I would be against that. And I'm just not sure how to handle it. I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I've done in that exact same situation. And just for those who are watching and don't understand what is meant by JW propaganda, um, they actually even have a like a pixel, pixel style cartoon series called... Uh, Become Jehovah's Friend, starring these two children called Caleb and Sophia. And it's a series of lessons um, basically teaching children how to be Jehovah's Witnesses and um, teaching them, for example, to give their ice cream money to Watchtower for more Kingdom Halls to be built and that kind of thing. So some really disturbing, grotesque attempts at hijacking the minds of, of young children, uh, not to be taken lightly, because we know this stuff works. It certainly worked on me when I was a child, even though we didn't have the cartoons back then. So with that in mind, uh, my wife and I were very, very firm on this uh, with our believing in laws. And we said, look, you try and indoctrinate our children, you don't see our children. And and that basically worked. There were, there were one or two, you could say, relapses, but for the most part, the message is now received and understood and they know that if they try and indoctrinate Jessica, Jessica being the older one, she, she's then going to come and tell us what what she was told and we're going to have issue with them. So uh, they, they abide by that rule and you are perfectly in a position to lay down that rule as the child's parent. Well, I appreciate that. Um, my son is still very, fairly young, so he wouldn't be able to tell me what's going on and my wife is supporting of, of teaching him all the JW teachings because mm. she's, she's a living Jehovah's. Well, that complicates things. Uh, yeah. That complicates things. It does. Because you're not the only parent and you're not mm. the only one that's going to have a say. Mm. So we've had a conversation lately and she has agreed to wait a bit until he's a bit older before she starts teaching him all the you know dogma. I, of course. You see, my, my question dogma, would be, how is it appropriate for you to use the the developmental phase of a child to drive home this this knowledge? If it's true, why can't you wait till they're an adult and they have critical thinking skills? That would be my question. My point, exactly. Um, but it, it just disturbs me because um, uh, it's gotten to a point where when they ask him where Jehovah is, he's pointing at the sky, even though he's, he can't even talk. So uh, I just don't know what to expect if I should just stay quiet for a little longer and see how it how it pans out, or uh, I just yeah. Again, I, I don't really know what to do. I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I've done, and um, just as like a fail safe in case they do try and indoctrinate Jessica, she's now at an age where I've been able to sit down with her and explain in child's terms what's at stake, and the way I ended up uh, explaining it is that there are some, (laughs) you'll laugh, but this is all true, it's just explained in a child's way. There are some bad men who live in America in uh, in a forest by a lake, because that's where the headquarters are. And, And they have the power to control people and stop people from loving each other. And the way that you resist the power of the bad men is by asking questions. And one of the tricks that the bad men play is to is to say that Jehovah is going to do things to people if they don't follow them. And 
again, to a, it may seem ridiculous, but hopefully when Jessica's older, I, almost certainly when Jessica's older, she'll, she'll get it. She'll understand what we were explaining to her in an age-appropriate way. But that, I'm not saying that that's how you should do it. I'm just saying that's what worked for me. Of course. Um, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I, I'm just good. I've, I've told my wife that I just don't want her telling our son that uh, his dad is going to die in Armageddon or anything like that because mm. that might be traumatizing to him. That, sure. That's a tricky one, um, though. I, I would only re-emphasize that, that the question then needs to be, you know, if you're so confident that this is the truth, why are you exploiting the childhood, um, the, the, the the developmental phase to, dr to drive this home rather than waiting for them to be an adult? Sure. Mm. I appreciate it. Yeah, I hope it works out for you, Jim. And I'm glad, you know, you picked the right week to call because while I, yeah. I've given similar, I actually gave similar advice last night in Phoenix, but not with regard to Jehovah's Witness, but your your situation where you're a non-believer and your wife's a believer, that complicates things. And rather than worrying about the extended family and what they may or may not do, you and your wife mm -hmm. have to basically come to a non-Jesus yeah. meeting and sort stuff out. Yeah, I, I guess it's just, it's overwhelming having a child alone and, and being in the situation just only aggravates things. So I appreciate you guys' uh, time and, and taking the call. I know I'm not the only one in this situation. You absolutely are not. And thanks so much for calling, Jim. All right. Have a lovely evening. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, that's what it's. We, we hear from people all the time in, in different situations. And if there's any other message that we could get out to anybody, it's that. Almost certainly, no matter how strange your situation is, you are almost certainly not the only one that's going through it. And yeah. it's one of the reasons why we often direct people to recoveringfromreligion.org, both the website and the hotline. There are people there you can talk to. There are uh, social networks that you can get involved in, the, the ACA Discord, uh, other things like that, where you can maybe find somebody uh, and do what Lloyd's done and what other people have done, which is build a community and connect people. A good resource for um, people in Jim's situation is the XJW subreddit. So if you go on Reddit and just type in XJW, EXJW, you'll find literally tens of thousands of XJWs on there. And usually if you, have, if you put a, a situation to them, you'll get some good advice.